Alright guys, I'm going to do a tutorial on the MIDI binding functionality in LUP. Uh, at the moment we have uh, basically a blank LUP session, you can see from the screenshots here, and I have an um, MKK MIDI controller. It's a simple keyboard, touchpad, CC, knob controller. Um, you can see here in our jack connections that uh, you're listening to my voice from the system going into LUP. It's being routed straight through to the mix, and uh, hence it's being recorded here by Record My Desktop and being played over the speakers. Here we can see MIDI Capture 2, that's actually an input and an output for this MPK mini device. Uh, you can see here in the ALSA tab it's actually named properly, but uh, that's that one there. So in order to create a loop binding, what we're going to do is uh, click on loop here, go to the setup tab. That's going to give us this window. I'm just going to keep that on top so we always have a good view overview. Uh, if we click new controller here, then what we can see is basically that loop is going to create a new controller. We're going to call this MPK mini. In so that it represents the name. Then uh, if we have a look in the connections dialog here we'll see that LUP actually popped up with two new MIDI ports. So one is the MPK MIDI in, the other is the MIDI out. Uh, this device, or this uh, yeah, MIDI port, is uh, going to provide feedback to, to the device, whereas this one is going to take the input from the device. So for now I'm just going to show you MIDI input bindings, which basically means if we turn the controllers on the hardware, LUP is going to react. So we've connected the MPK to the LUP MIDI input port now, so we don't need the connections dialog anymore. And in order to create bindings, uh, it's a fairly simple three-step three, three step process, where first we click Bind Enable, and that tells LUP to basically keep track of what user interface elements are being altered. So if I wanted to bind something to the master fader here, we move the master fader, we see that the target changes to master volume, that basically means that if we move a MIDI controller now, LUP is going to bind that MIDI controller to the master volume. For instance, if we want to bind this knob here on the corner, we can move it, and now we can see that the master volume is actually being influenced based on the controller, and my voice is uh, also growing louder and quieter in the process, as you can see right about now. So um, that's, uh, that's the basics of uh, me creating a MIDI binding. If we wanted to create a binding from these three knobs here in the hardware device to these three tracks, then we can see it's a pretty simple process where we click Bind Enable, we move the UI element that we want to bind to, and then we move the MIDI controller. So I've just created three MIDI, MIDI volume or track volume MIDI bindings from the device there. Uh, similarly, if we wanted to bind these three knobs to the reverb sends, we bind Enable, we'd move that track, and create a binding. And it might seem a little tedious, but it's actually not that bad. Uh, considering we can save these maps, it's a do once and done kind of thing. So uh, yeah, we can see that I've just mapped the reverb sends amounts. Um, if we wish to turn on and off the send, perhaps with these two buttons, so we'll use this pad to turn on the reverb send and this one to turn off the reverb send. So. I'm going to bind enable, I'm going to click on, now we're binding to the send enable, so send track and from off to on to this message, that just sent a MIDI on message, so now anytime we press this it's going to turn on the reverb send, if it's already on it's just going to remain on. Now what we're going to do is create a binding to a track send active off event, so we're going to bind this note to on, off, on, off, so we can see that we have like two buttons here and those two buttons represent on-off functionality. Press this one, it turns on, keep pressing it, it stays on, turn that one off. So, what if we actually wanted to have it momentary, that if when we press the pad, it turns on, and when we release the pad, it turns off again? It's actually the same procedure. So, we'll bind enable, we're going to bind the note on event to the on. Now, while holding the pad still down, I'm going to bind enable, I'm going to turn off this end, so we can see that it's actually going to, yeah, um, shows the track send active again, and now I'm going to bind the MIDI note off message to the disable event. So basically if I press the pad it's going to turn on, and if I release the pad it's going to turn off again. Quite simple. Um, so you can see that binding either momentary or like uh, on-off type messages is quite trivial in LUP. It's just a, a little bit of uh, trickery in the MIDI messages really. If we wanted to bind uh, these scene launches to the keys here on the piano, it's uh, the exact same process again. So say we wanted to bind something to scene number one, we can see here launch scene is the target, and I'm going to use that key, so when we press the key we see that the activity is occurring. 
bind to scene number two, I'm going to press this key, and bind to scene number three, I'm going to press this key. So now what we have is a situation where we can launch three LUPs, LUP scenes using the keyboard. We can actually control volumes, track sends and reverb sends, all from a MIDI controller. Very simple, and uh, that's how MIDI binding works in LUP at the moment. Clicking save here is actually going to write that file, so these bindings have now been saved into a LUP, into like the name dot ctlr file so mpk mini is what i named this controller at the start that's also what it's called on the jack graph so we can see here mpk mini so mpk mini dot ctlr is a file now and uh, basically that's storing your midi bindings that file can be uh, auto enabled to use on lup startup so it's actually very easy to create work a controller once and then just leave that as your default controller for a lup session if you open a new LUP session, that same controller is going to be uh, mapped to your devices. So it's, you know, it's your it, you create a personal binding with one of these devices or whatever type of MIDI device you have, and then regardless of which session you open, it will interact in the same way. We can see that uh, we can actually load these controllers. I have two different maps for the Akai APC currently, and uh, I'm experimenting with some other controllers. For example, there the MBK Mini.ctlr is the file that we just wrote. That's LUP MIDI binding. Thanks for listening, and till next time.